Hello and welcome to um To start off this week's news, scientists at the University College London have created a bioengineered esophagus and successfully implanted it into mice. The scientists involved in the experiment are aiming to add further research and development into bioengineered esophagus that could be used for children born either with damaged or missing esophagus. To create the esophagus, they used cells from rats, mice and humans. This small step can hopefully eventually lead to larger organs being engineered, which could help many people in the future and lessen the need for organ donors. In other news, new research has been done by Aron University that suggests that mammals are not evolving fast enough to combat the extinction crisis that is happening. Unfortunately, this extinction crisis is coming from humans, so um, whoops. Apparently, if nothing is done about this within the next couple of decades, the catastrophic ecological results would mean that nature could take three to five million years to recover. And going very far back in time, it seems that we have found the first animals, or at least the first animals that we know of for now. Sponge evidence has been found from 100 million years before the Great Cambrian Fossil Explosion. This new discovery yet again lets us see deeper into our past and our lineage. Sauropodomorphs have been in the news quite frequently in the last couple of months, and it looks like they're back again. This week, fossils of an early Jurassic North American species called Cerasaurus were described in great detail, allowing researchers to confirm its placement within the sauropodomorph lineage, as well as to get a better understanding of how large body size and long necks first started to evolve in these animals. In other sauropodomorph news, a study published in Nature has examined the smallest skull of any diplodocid found. The skull belongs to a young Diplodocus and is only around 24 centimetres in length. Sauropod skulls are very rare discoveries, so this is a very significant fossil and allows paleontologists to understand a great deal more about Diplodocid growth. Also, it probably looks adorable when it was alive. Another young prehistoric reptile has been in the news this week, with the smallest known juvenile Tylosaurus being described. Coming from late Cretaceous rocks in Kansas, this skull is around 30 centimetres long, and the authors of this paper have suggested that these mosasaurs could possibly have hunted like modern orca. They point to bony extrusions on the jaws of Tylosaurus that look like the protruding rostra on the whales, saying that this could have protected the teeth as the reptiles slammed into large prey to weaken them, like orca do today. A new species of prehistoric walrus was named today, based on a 6-7 to seven million year old fossil found in California. Known as Titanotaria, this animal did not possess the iconic tusks of the modern walrus species, and it's actually the most well known and one of the latest surviving tuskless members of the lineage. The new species adds to the known diversity of walruses in the past, allowing a better understanding of how this unique group evolved over the last 16 million years. Also deserving a quick mention is a new species of Tyrannosaur that was named and described recently, Dynamo Terror. We won't say much about it here, but there will be a video this Sunday going into much more detail into the discovery, so look out for that. And speaking of Sunday, it looks like it's the end of the video, so as always, thank you so much for watching this week's episode of 7 Days of Science. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you on Sunday.